marriage is what it was. Longevity for me was the hard thing. We've been, we've been down for 20 years, but I ain't even evaluate that 20 years was miserable. Right, right. I ain't evaluate that. Right, right. I just went with the longevity because I was of the persuasion it was better to have you over here than not here at all. Kind of like some of the females in the building who keep a man past their usefulness. And men the same. Some people got a man just to have a man. He, he don't bring none to the table. Nothing. He ain't paying a bill. He ain't even tell, he ain't lying to you, telling you you're beautiful. I'm going to need that. And so I bought those issues. Everybody got them to the table. So here I am, a strong black woman, but underneath all this strength, I was needed. I'm going to tell you what really healed and delivered me. Going to it, man. Riding to it, It's a whole, y'all, y'all, Atlanta is not the cootie gras of life, but I'm telling you, it's a whole different spirit right, man. up there. Yeah, it sure is. Is. See, we, we're crabbing the bucket down here. We are. We're crabbing, but we, we have no culture here. Our culture is Facebook. We kill our own here, down here. We have a high end of messy where it don't just affect women. We got more messy men than we have men. Amen. This, is, this, is, this is just the region. I'm just telling you what we're dealing with. Amen. And so here Lord plants me right in Columbus, Georgia. I, 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 some days I, I talk to Pastor Bia and say, you did me wrong. You did me wrong when you dropped me out there. But then I started to understand in the spirit why I'm here. I, I'm not asking God to leave. I can ride out of here three days a week and a vacation with my wife. So I'm good. Plus, I happen to love where I live, so I ain't trying to move right now. But I can have two residents. But the Lord is good. So I asked the Lord, I said, Lord, what is, why am I experiencing some of the things I see? He said, because you think everybody is your friend. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. You think everybody is your friend. Uh -oh. Amen. I never thought my sisters and, and brothers were good enough to be my friend. I didn't even like them. None of them. I didn't like them. Because I had a desire at that time in my life to be an only child. So I did everything I could to distinguish myself as being different because I was if they were, everybody was wearing blue, I was wearing green. If my mama said jump left, right, left, I would be right, left, right. Because being raised in a big family, I, you know, you always long for what you don't have. I only gained their appreciation for siblings in my 50s. And so the Lord said, you consider everybody your friend. I can remember as a child stealing bread and sugar out of my mirror and using sugar salad. And giving it to a little girl down the street. She's just standing at the back door being poor. She said, you got some sugar bread? I didn't know we were the poor people, too. And so I was giving her bread, and my sister probably was supposed to eat. Because I thought everybody was my friend. So when I began to study for the message, I found this, this quote. It said, God will sometimes end a relationship for your protection. Don't chase after a person he's trying to save you from. Amen. Amen. All right. All right. My Lord. I said, wow. Well, Lord, what is a friend? How am I going to get some friends? If, if what, is a, what is a friend? I think that by the circle of pretty tight, I did. And then God will show you some things. When most people think about how to choose their friend, they have more of a worldly, casual concept than a biblical one. And in John 15 and 5, 15, Jesus told his disciples that he called them friends and not servants. And since the kingdom of God is based upon relationship and not ministry, you know, I'm your pastor. Uh -huh. Watch out. Watch out. You come into church and tie them. Don't give you a relationship with me. Amen. Amen. Right. Amen. I have a relationship with you, 
based on something else. That ministry is what God called you to, and I just happen to be the leader. I can be the any pastor. But before you call people free, you got to know what everybody is in your life. And friendships take a while to be developed. Amen. 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 Say amen. amen. Everybody ain't your friend. Amen. Many churches, even Christians, attempt to engender friendships merely to have a nice fellowship together. And I did that. When we first started out this ministry, we had fellowship every Sunday, every Thursday for those who've been here that long. Yep. We had a fellowship meal every Thursday and every Sunday. Some people only came to Bible study when there was some food. And when Bible study stopped feeding, they didn't feel the call of God to get here. Amen. Mm -hmm. But even with us breaking bread, because y'all do know that when you eat with somebody that's intimate, it's, the point here. it's intimate that we break bread because you can learn everything about a person when you take them out to eat. Watch them. Watch them. How you handle the waitress? Come here! Oh, what's wrong with you? She's a waitress, not a servant. A slave. You can learn a lot about a person by how they tip. I'm real turned off, y'all, by people who will run a waitress down in the ground and then give them a dog. I'm turned off by it. And when you tip well, it will get you favored with that waitress. We went to uh, uh, Ed's. And I ain't crazy about Ed himself, but I like the restaurant. Every now and again. I like to go in there and get me some, some African American cuisine that I don't have to cook. I don't have to wash the dishes. Yes. I don't have to do anything. Amen. And they don't give you enough that if you're taking none home, uh -huh. so I'm good. Uh -huh. <laughs> so when I go in there and I eat, we have a waitress there, a server there, that I've been knowing for years. Very humble woman. She waited on us. She falls all over us. Amen. Amen. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Yolanda, she falls all over us. Yes. When, I, when we get in the line, she comes down there and she'll say, how many y'all is it? Women and children and men and whoever's with us. Because it's not a, 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 a eat out click. Anybody who's standing at the end of the service, I'm going to go eat somewhere. So if they want to go eat, because I ain't paying for it, that to keep the lump numb and down anyway. I'm swiping the car for mine. You get y'all. <laughs> I had to learn that. Yeah. And so we get in the restaurant, we can tell her she's all the way over there. Everybody in that restaurant knows that when they see me, that Yolanda's going to wait on me. Amen. Yolanda gets a tip that's over the top. Amen. Amen. We're not leaving without it. I don't care if you have to go to the bank machine. She's getting a tip, one of them all factor tips. Yes. Because that characterizes who I am. If I can't afford the tip, I need to go home and collect some pots. Amen. 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 And so I watch, I get to know a person's spirit by how they how they demand the waitress and then give them a dollar. I don't give the waitress more than I give God. But I tip her pretty well. And so you, I learn who my friends are in the restaurant. In order to be truly kingdom, truly kingdom fellowship, our ultimate goal is that that person that I'm fellowshipping with is ultimately going to get closer to God. It's not so much as we just kicking it. Because if you ever encounter me, I'm going to always tell you what's right. And my ultimate fellowship is, my ultimate reason for our fellowship is that I call you out. If I don't call you, if you are close to me, I'm going to call you out. You know you mean it now. You do know that, right? Yeah. You know you're wrong. So everybody can't be your friend. There are many people who like to consistently hang out with people, but you're not a biblical friend. And Jesus is going to give us the way that he picked his friends. If you're not building somebody up, you're not a friend. Amen. Friendship is about building somebody up. Friendship is about, I'm going to drag you, if need be, to your greatest potential. I'm not going to leave you to act and let you do what you want to do. It's about building people up. 
And so check your friend list real good. Before I call someone friend now, before I make a long-term commitment to anybody, I want it to be about their destiny. And our destiny is determined by who we surround ourselves with. If you surround yourself with broke people, you're going to stay broke. Amen. And not just broke people, broke-minded people. People who will never, and broke-minded people should never eat at a restaurant. You broke. Why are you out here giving this lady going to work for $2.13 an hour? I don't. Broke-minded people don't, don't invest in themselves. They just give up and fight. You work every day and you won't even comb your hair. That's a broke mindset. Now, I ain't telling you to go to the opposite end and put two grand on your back, but you're supposed to look like you've invested in yourself. Broke-minded people never give. They need everything they have. Broke-minded people they always look for what you can give them. They are never planning what I'm gonna give. When I got, when I used to, when I started, when I came out of that poverty mindset, every time I thought I was getting a check from anywhere, I started to think about who I was gonna bless. And they, they I'm gonna bless my children anyway. Y'all hear me? And my godchildren. I'm gonna bless them anyway. But I'm trying to talk about. Other people, if all you can bless is your children and your grandchildren and your godchildren, you have a poverty mentality. I have I had the hardest time letting people understand about, and not because the passion of prison ministry is my passion, is because you need to practice giving to somebody other than you. The Bible said we can reap where we ain't even planted. But if you ain't planted nothing, you're going to reap nothing. Right. Say amen. amen. So a person's destiny is determined by those that's closest with them in regards to quality time spent, mutual goals, and mutual purpose. Do you want anything? Would you want to be a rapper? Then hang with some real rappers. Not rappers standing on the corner just holding out. My, my nephew is a battle rapper and a successful one. He's a successful battle rapper. He grew up without his father. He was my brother. His father was my brother who died. My brother was 37 years old when he died, and his son was eight. He has music in him. He's an entertainer by birth. It's, it's, it's innate in him to be an entertainer. His dad was an entertainer. And he perfected himself. He didn't just stand around the house recording down on, on downtown Columbus. He put himself out there, took his own money, because when you're in business, you're supposed to invest in your business, not eat your seed. And he put himself out there. They called him Mr. Mills. Mind you, this was my brother's child out of wedlock. He didn't even care about our name. His name was Jake. But he put himself out there in his dad's name, Mr. Mills. They, you, ought, you ought to go online. You can see him on YouTube. You can see him. Him and Lissandra were born in the hospital together. I have pictures on social media of them. They came home from the hospital on the same day. But what he did, coming from Gary, Indiana, nobody was looking for him. He surrounded himself with people who do what he wanted to do. And he eats, and he eats well. I keep asking, I said, come to Columbus. I, I, I know so many young men who stand around rapping as the gunfire shoot over their head. They don't have no job. He said, I couldn't do this if it didn't pay. So if rapping is what you're going to do, rapping in Columbus, Georgia is not going to pay you. You're going to have to get you going to have to get you a day job so you can get out of here to these rap battles. I don't know. It must be possible. I don't know nothing about it. 
They got to have an angry spirit. And that's what he does. Mad about it. But he's rapping. I want you to know you are who you choose to hang out with the most. Who are you rapping? So if all your friends are whores, you run. You ain't leading them to the Lord. Y'all having prayer over there? If all your friends smoke weed and you don't mind the smoke going over your head, you smoke weed. Second hand smoking just like smoking. You are who you choose to spend the most time with. I like successful progressive people. I love progressive people. I like people who think outside the box. This week I went to uh, a Bible study and I didn't even realize where I was until the Bible study was almost over. It was Charles, I mean, uh, uh, Dr. Swindoll's church. First church, first Baptist church of Atlanta. Huge, huge facility. And they had a lady in there who, uh, Baby Mason, who was teaching Bible study. She had one little book. It was elementary, printed, I could write. And she got a grip for a Bible study. And we walked out of there and Lana said, Doc, you got, you, you, you got to come out this mindset. Because you live living beneath your potential. Market yourself. Who you're around mm. has a lot to do with it. Your success. Amen. And so, the, here are some things. Jesus had criteria. And you get your pencil out so you can write this down. So, as you start to encounter people, you might need to scratch them off the print list. Oh, amen? Okay. Say amen. amen. He had criteria before he chose his friends. The first thing he did, he prayed about. Say, pray about it. In Luke 6 and 12 and 13, Jesus prayed all night. Before he chose the 12 people who were the closest to him. This shows his choice of friends was not haphazard. Neither should ours be. You need to pray about who you call friends. Pray about He prayed all night before he chose the closest people to him. Some people are draining you. Y'all hear me? Some people are sucking the very life out of you. Some people you call friends are not friends. They might, you got to put them in another category. You might be an associate. Or you run your usefulness in my life. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And you don't have to go and tell them, I heard a word from the Lord today and you ain't my friend. Don't no, tell them all. <laughs> and don't come off suddenly. You create more drama than what it's worth. I fall back. I'm not a fall back. I get my fall back game to some serious y'all. I'm busy. Let me call you back. I didn't say when. Like right. 2019. Let me call you back. I'm going to make sure I don't lie. Don't sleep. That'll be true. <laughs> say amen. amen. So Jesus prayed about it. That's the first thing you need to do before you call the next person a friend. You need to pray about it. The second thing. His friends live lives of obedience to God. Mm. Come on, y'all. In John 15, 14, Jesus said, I call you friends if you do what I command. It would be foolish for a believer to make their closest friends and confidence even. If you believe them, your friends don't have like beliefs, then it's something that's going to pull you back. God warned uh, 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 Solomon. Don't marry these strange women. Right. Leave these women alone that don't believe in God. And y'all get tricked so quick. All they got to do is quote one scripture and you think you're a Christian. Amen. <laughs> the Lord said, you my wife. He go to church. He, I ask you the straight question. Is he saved? He go to church. I ask you, right. was he saved? Right. If he's smoking your house out with me, no. more than likely he ain't saved. Hello. Can you follow a, 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 a dope no. <laughs> And everybody wondered, Doc, a chap, Doc got to be lonely now. It's been seven years since her husband went home to be with the Lord. And God ain't sent me nothing to fool. <laughs> <laughs> nothing to fool me. I'm not impressed by it. Hey, shawty, shawty, y'all go with the shawty? Mm. That's irreverent. 
They call me Shawty. Hey, Shawty. Any little thing. You know your self-esteem is real low when your number is in every random man's phone in Columbus uh -oh. Girls. Your self-esteem is low. Why do you feel compelled to have to get your number out because somebody said you was cute? I'm supposed to be cute. Amen. Hello? Amen. I'm supposed to be cute. Yes, Lord. My debit card tells me this. Yes, God. Yes. So don't get turned on because someone tells you you're cute. You have to carry yourself like what you want. Amen. You act like you're down in the trenches. If I'm in the trenches, you won't know. Amen. I ain't going to look like I'm in the trenches. And I'm not going to act like I'm in the trenches. Everybody don't need your phone number. Say amen. amen. So Jesus chose his friends based on the fact of the type of lives they live. Mm -hmm. Amen. Jesus at times spent time with sinners. But he only spent time with sinners to bring them to the Lord. Amen. Amen. For y'all who said, you know, Jesus sat with the tax, and he didn't no, kick, he didn't no, kick no, it with no, them. You don't even hear uh, any scripture when he went back to the house. <laughs> he didn't go back. Because the power of God is so good and so strong that when you sit in the presence of sinners, either they're going to change or they're going to see something in you that ain't right. If you cuss and carry on and act a fool in front of people, don't go back talking about the gospel. They don't want to hear that. No. Amen. Right, no. <laughs> Say amen. amen. So his friends live the life of obedience. Mm -hmm. Paul encouraged Timothy to pursue righteousness, faith, love, along with peace with those who call on the Lord from a pure heart. That means that even when I, when I got saved, Hear me now. Yolanda was my best friend, but we were separated. Amen. I had no conversation with Yolanda, but this is the day that the Lord is Amen. I don't want to hear nothing about her ratchetness. I don't want to hear that. I had her, her children with me. Amen. After a while, she saw my walk was serious. I remember I showed her my first title before she thought I was insane because she knew the thief said. She knew I would have never gave nobody no money like that. <laughs> She saw my walk change. My children saw that my walk change. I won't cut some people out on the regular that I used to, because that's what I did. But y'all who think your mouth is crunk, y'all didn't have nothing on me. I cuss you in the church. I cuss you in the grocery store. It didn't make me no other matter. But when God saved me and started to work on my life, I didn't bring them to an open shame. I was serious about it. And some people who have watched me and knew when she going to blow it. The people who have dogged me and walked the dog with me in ministry, they would have had a chance in 1998. What it would have been was a misunderstanding and a ride in a police car. That's what I was rolling with. But when God saved me, I had to change. So people that you call friends, y'all can't be nothing up in the joint. You ain't my friend. Because I didn't check you off the list. And I didn't fall out with you. I just fell back. Say amen. amen. So you got to live a life of obedience. Number three, Jesus chose his friends to be with him in order to send them out. I, I wasn't thinking about Veronica today, but I know Veronica is a worshiper. Four years here with me, I did town with her mother. When she came here, she knew how to raise her children. She, she, uh, uh, she was all over the place. And you, you want people to do what you want them to do when you want them to do it. But that ain't, what, that ain't how God works. Amen. He working in you, and it might take a while. And so if you're a mentor and you don't have no patience, then leave people alone because they're not going to perform at your level when you get ready for them to. Amen. They don't make mistakes, but when you keep on making the same mistake, you know you get dealing with some insanity. <laughs> Say amen. amen. And so my objective is, but every person under the sound of my voice as a pastor, I'm not holding on to you. If God calls you to something, God is not going to call you to go home and sit down. Amen. Let me tell you what he ain't calling you to. Amen. He ain't calling you mad. That's your madness you need to deal with. He ain't called you to leave one church and sit at home for six months while you pray about it. That's not God. That's you. Amen. Right. Right. 
When he closed one door, he opened another. A lot of people have served in familiar places. That's why they can't go where God wants them to go. This is my cousin, church. I've been here since I was a little girl. And you're still raising the same kind of hell. You ain't got a word of conviction over there. Uh. Wow. You need to get a word that gets in your face, get in your grill, get in your business. Amen. That's what you need. And so, if, the, if your friends are not preparing you for something greater, it's not, it's not a good relationship. When Londa came in the kingdom, Londa wouldn't pray in London. She would, she would, she would sing and never learn the words to the song. Y'all, it's, it's hilarious that I've never seen anything like that. <laughs> <laughs> she was mean spirited. Amen. You know what I mean? Because I had trained her in mean spirited. Being mean spirited, I had trained her in it for years. Londa was actually a very nice crybaby, a cooler matata. So every person who would come across my life, if I was down with them, Yolanda would be down with them, and they didn't even like her. Amen. They wouldn't even like her, but they used her, but they like her. Amen. Because they didn't want to know her. And I ain't blowing her horn, because those who are closest to me can't smoke them. Say amen. 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 So you got to be able to send them out. You gotta be able to make sure they're able to be used by God. The people that, that Evangelist Barbara brings into the ministry, really and truly, she's their pastor. Amen. 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 I ain't jealous. Amen. I want God to send every anointed person he can find up in here to me. And just let me touch their life and listen to them. Because when you're intimidated by who God brings to your church, Amen. then you're immature. Amen. Because when, when the people she brings, they look to her. What are we doing? What are, what are we doing? And you're not a pastor. You're not called to be nobody following you. Amen. 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 No, but I don't care if, it's a bunch, if you've got a bunch of hoods following you. If you can say that, you're right. Amen. Say amen. amen. Number four. Jesus chose friends he could share his heart with. In John 15, 15, it teaches, that, teaches us that Jesus shared his heart with his friends who understood him. In Matthew 13, 11, Jesus told his friends, to you it has been given to understand the secrets of the kingdom of heaven, but to them, non-friends, non-saved, it has not been given. If someone can't understand your heart, if you don't understand my heart, you don't understand me. If I say, Ebony, who's been around me her whole life, or Tina, who's been around me since she was 16 years old, if I say, you know what, over here talking to uh, Pastor McMillan, I said, Tina doing the most. So if you go back and tell Tina, yeah, Doc said you doing the most, and instantly she take offense, she don't know my heart. Amen. Amen. Right. Amen. Right. Amen. Because what is you, nobody can set the context or the situation Amen. to convey it properly. Amen. Amen. So you automatically, yeah, she dogged me out. No, I, you don't know her heart. You don't know my heart. What, what point on the journey have I dogged you? You got to look at, this is why you have a credit for a record. Uh -huh. When you go to uh, 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 Sears, and they go, but if you go to Macy's and get you a credit card, <laughs> they look at several things when you use that card. They look at your shopping behavior. Mm -hmm. Mine is all over the place. They can't figure it out. <laughs> they look at your shopping behavior. They look at your payment history. Amen. So if you pay them every month on time just the minimum payment, that's the history. Or if you pay them above that or you double the payment, that's a, that's a record right there. So when you go back in, and I do it all the time. I ask them, increase my limit. They say, how much? I just try random numbers to see if they're going to give it to me. So I said, $3,000. I increase your credit limit about this. Yes, they do. Mm -hmm. uh, and what you do when you get the $3,000, you don't spend that. Because you're creating a history. Well, that's how you do with people. I'm creating a history. When did I dog you out? 
We were not after you. We did not hold you down. This one thing you thought you heard, you judging me on the one thing you heard. Amen. Amen. Say amen. amen. You got a record. Jesus chose people he could share his heart with. The same person I am when I'm when you think I'm happy is the same person I am in the review. Amen. It don't change the love. Amen. Love don't change. Amen. So if you got to judge me on one encounter, you don't know my heart. Amen. Say amen. amen. And so Jesus chose his friends he could share his heart with. When you share your heart with somebody, you shouldn't hear that every way. Amen. Right. You shouldn't have to tell me. Right. Don't say I say I, I never share with anybody anything I don't want to hear twice in a while. I had to learn it. So if you go out and say, I said it, I did. Yeah. Right. And if you got to learn the context and all that, you got to come back for that. Because Pookie ain't going to tell you how I said it. Right. Amen. Say that. Amen. All right. So Jesus chose friends. He prayed about it. He chose friends that live a life obedient to God. He chose his friends to be with him to send out. They could do ministry. He chose his friends that he could share his heart with. And then Jesus proactively chose his friends. In John 15 and 16, Jesus teaches us in the context of choosing friends that people did not choose him, but vice versa. And so although this passage is referring to salvation, it also shows us his methodology for choosing friends was proactive and not reactive. You ever seen people attach themselves to you? And next thing you know, to the year go by, you they 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 your friend. Amen. They just showed up. <laughs> now they your friend. Yeah. They ain't proved nothing in the line of friendship, but now they your friend. No, no, no. Jesus said proactively choose your friend. You know I like in my life. Right. I don't think I'm being unfair. That's one of the things I did wrong in ministry. I tried to make everybody in the whole ministry my friend. I'm one person. Amen. My job was to be your pastor. So if, if I gave uh, 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 Tina a birthday present and didn't give every other person in a birthday present, it was a problem. Uh -huh. I did the wrong thing. I started letting everybody in my house. I thought everybody's, because everybody's my friend. Y'all knew that. I let everybody in my house. Only to hear them in the street. Yeah, she got this, she got that. Uh -huh. I shut that down. <laughs> you get in my house, you a police officer. You kick the door I come right outside. What's your name? <laughs> I'm funny like that now. Only because I had to learn as a leader that everybody's not my friend. Now let me help you out. Everybody ain't your friend. Be careful what devils you let in your house. Uh -oh. The worst thing that ever happened is when you have death in the family, you got to let people in. Oh my God, oh my God. <laughs> you can't stand at the door and say, don't come in here. Right. So you got to let everybody in with their chicken, and you got to let all of them in there, and I can let three days of grieving with you, they think they're your friend. You can't get rid of them. They want to hear the details. They want to be on the front line of what's going on in your life. They're not going to stay. As soon as the last piece of chicken, they, they out of your face. But you thought they were your friend during that time. He proactively God is friend. Do not merely pick those that you desire to be close to. Choose people based on the leading of the Lord. Because when God tells you to cut somebody off or don't fool with somebody, uh, 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 I read a post on Facebook one day, and the person said, the Lord didn't leave me to fool with you. They were talking about somebody. Uh -huh. I thought it was, it was funny to me at that time, but it had a whole lot of truth in it. Some people you can meet and you just, you get that funny feeling. Right. They ain't did nothing to you. They ain't said nothing you don't like. But, you, you, and you don't have to get out and say, yeah, I feel some kind of way. No, that was God's warning to you, leave that alone. That's not a friend. When you feel uncomfortable, God gave you an unction. You know, it, it don't have to be anything wrong with them. It don't even have to be anything wrong with you. Y'all together gonna make a mess. Yeah. Leave them alone. Say amen. amen. 
And so he proactively found his friends. Look at not everybody wanted to be close to Jesus was given access to Jesus. That's something that the message comes from the message of prayer. I've given too many people access. Everybody got my number? Everybody. Every toilet, bathroom, got my number. All right, if you got my number, I ain't, I ain't talking about you. But when I stop answering your calls, I am. <laughs> because everybody's not in your life for the right purpose. And when you learn better, you do better. You don't have to be mean and rude to people. God gives you information for you. Jesus didn't give everybody access to him. The Bible said his inner circle was three at first. On the mount, it was three, then it was twelve, those disciples, and then it was seven. He sent out seven. And so a lot of us have excess people in our life for longevity. We've been friends for 80 years. No, you haven't. <laughs> you have not been friends that far. Right, right. They just been there. Mm -hmm. And people think longevity uh -huh, right. and loyalty the same thing. Oh, yes, Lord. Oh, God. Just because you've been there don't mean you've been friends. Oh, hey, yes, Amen. My Lord. Yeah, because when you are when you are a friend, when you are really a friend, you examine your relationship. And you know what? I, I seek to make my friends happy. I love my friends. I love I love people. And God had to put that in. And I check on folks. Hey, how you doing? I'll send them a Facebook post. Just checking on you. Where you been? I ain't seen it. But I don't have to be in your face every day. And then when you start to feel some type of weight because I ain't in your face, then there's something wrong with you because there's only one of me. Say amen. amen. Your relationship with your, with your church, people who fall out with somebody in church and stop going to church, there ain't nothing wrong with the church. There's something wrong with you. Amen. Wow. amen. You ain't in church long enough to have no beef with nobody in church. Amen. And that's something that I had to learn as a pastor. I used to, the fellowship was forced. Huh? I just pushed y'all in there every week to have lunch and dinner together. Y'all start fighting, nothing up, going ham. Didn't like each other, want to stab and kill each other. Some of these same people ain't here today. Because I, would, I should not. I could have saved myself thousands of dollars. I should not have put these people. Fellowship is never forced. If I want to have dinner with you, I'm going to call you. If I want to eat at your house, you want you cook. And I'm good with that. And so you have to be proactive in finding your friends. Let me give you number six. Jesus' friends received the hard sayings. In John 6, 66 through 68, many of his disciples left him because they couldn't receive the meat of the word. Some people don't like what I say. Amen. I got to be all right with that. You don't like what I say? Bye. You, he, they received the hard sayings. His true friends were separated from those who were merely acquaintances. Uh -huh, uh -huh. I get it. Uh -huh. Everybody I meet, ain't, I ain't even supposed to with them. Hey, how you doing? Useless. I'm friendly. I learned that in the South. Right. Y'all have to realize I'm not a Southern. And a lot of my manners are Northern. The walking in the room speaking, I, I practice that every single day of my life. I mean, I, I don't speak. Not by nature. And so when I walk in a place and I walk in work, and I'm the chaplain, so you know, it's an expectation I'm supposed to be here. <laughs> and so I have some co-workers who don't like God and don't like me. Nothing I did to them enough, but it is, you know, yeah. I ain't who they want me to be. So I've been there long enough that I'm growing on them. So now they start to speak. Now I've been there for, well, going on four months. Now you want to speak. Now I'm good with you not speaking. Now you want to speak. So <laughs> you speak it. Hey, champ. Hey. I remember I'm chap up there because down here I'm dark. Hey, champ. Hey, how you doing? Then they'll come back the next two days. Because I've grown accustomed to you not speaking. Uh -huh. Now, whatever you got going on, you want to speak. One brought it to my attention. I, I, you saw me the other day, you didn't speak. I just called it out for it. I said, well, it's me. The first night of the day, you didn't say anything to me. Amen. <laughs> Amen. 
So don't, don't feel no type of way. You could just remind me by saying, hey, but I'm going to make it a point to speak to you because I got it in my mem mental memory now. Uh -huh. And she looked at me just as strange. And she said, well, it's hard for me to receive you as a chaplain because you don't dress like one. Uh -huh. I said, what does a chaplain dress like? Because they didn't give me no dress code, but you want me to wear clergy? I got some. <laughs> what does a chaplain dress like? She said, on Fridays, we supposed to dress down. We supposed to wear jeans and tennis shoes. That's what they say. Now, for those who know me, I don't like jeans. And I don't like tennis shoes unless I'm working out. But I got a lot of everything at the house. So, you know, I can't do it just like they do it. I got to do it like I do it because that's who I am. So I put on these jeans. <laughs> and I put on some sparkly chucks with some fishnet socks. That's how I did. Because <laughs> that's what I was feeling in my spirit. So I threw them all the way off with the fishnet. They said, they said, chap, whatever you do, don't wear fishnet. I said, I don't have no dress code. I'm just doing what I want to do. So Jesus' friends received this hard saying. If you're my friend, I can't ever say nothing rough to you. You know. If your friends can't tell you the truth, they not true. Right. You need somebody to always tell you the most wonderful person in the world. That's not true. Right. Number seven. Jesus' friend stood by him during his trials. Some people are good to go with you until you go through something. Yeah. When, you, when you go through something, they're not there. I grieved too long for a lot of people. People left me because I grieved too long. Now that they, I seem to appear to be uh, acting normal, a lot of people don't know I'm normal. They met me as a pastor. They don't know me pre-salvation. They don't know nothing. They don't really know me like that. And so when I grieved too long, I took hits for grieving too long. I didn't know how to grieve. I didn't recognize until I was four years in that I was grieving for both my son and my husband at the same time because I wasn't afforded the opportunity to grieve for my son because I had been in prison. And so I had no right to grieve. And so as the grief was so prolonged, people took advantage of me. I gave away lots of money. And I was trying to buy these friends that you, you, know, you make payments on, but you can't keep them. Right. It's just like an a, a, a endless layaway. You're going to keep paying on Virginia. You'll never pick up no problem. Mm, and so I, I didn't understand. People, Luke 22 and 28 through 29 shows that Jesus' closest friends were those who stuck with him during his earthly trial. Who stick with you when you're going through Or they just jump ship. I, I don't need no fair weather friend. A trial will demonstrate the real from the fake in your life. And if you want to know where they are, stay sick too long, grieve too long, or go in the hospital too long. When I went through cancer treatment, and my cancer treatment was, was not like everybody else's. Everybody, cancer is individual. And I've learned so much about cancer during treatment. But you have people who go through, like my sister, she's in the trial. She's in the fight. And I tell you, she's in it. They extended her chemo out, three more treatments. You can almost, she's almost at the next level of chemo that you can have in a lifetime. They extended her chemo out, three more treatments. Now, when she go to chemo, they got to hospitalize her because she reacts to the cisplastin. She, got to, she has to be hospitalized because it mimics a heart attack even though there's no damage done to her heart. My sister has no children, which means that her care falls on two sisters. Because brothers don't do with sisters. It falls on two sisters. Two sisters, one that's very far away, and the other one that's very busy. But we got to, me and Linda got to make it happen. 
Because that's what they to do. She's been in this fight for going on three years now. And they can't cure her cancer. Cancer that she has, when they miss that cisplastin, when they miss the cisplastin, her numbers went back up. Not all the way up, but they started creeping up. Which means she got to take a chemo pill or something. And if God don't heal her, who gonna ride with you that long? In a truck. Say amen. amen. And so when God is teaching us how to pick our friends, he wants to tell you in closing that he's your friend. Amen. I heard a story this morning about two friends who were camping in the woods. As they were having their morning coffee, they heard rustling in the bushes coming toward them at full speed. It was a grizzly bear, a very hungry looking grizzly bear. One of them started putting, one of the men started putting on his shoes and his buddy turned around and said, what you putting your shoes on? But you think you can outrun this grizzly bear? He said, no, nah, all I gotta do is outrun you. <laughs> get the one in the back. He said, I ain't got to outrun this grizzly bear. I just got to outrun you. That's what a fair weather friend will do. But you ain't looking for one to outrun the grizzly bear. You're looking for one who's going to be with you to the end. The Bible says that a friend sticks closer than a brother. He loves at all times. And Socrates once said, friend, there is no friend. But Socrates did know the word of God. Amen. In Proverbs 18 and 24, it says a friend sticks closer than a brother. And the friend I'm talking about is Jesus. Amen. He's the friend. He's the greatest friend that we all can have. Amen. He shows us how to choose our friend because he is a friend. Jesus offered friendship to all humanity. And the question is, how many of us will receive him as our friend. He said in his word, today when you hear my voice, harden not your heart. Today is the day of salvation. Every head back. I told you how Jesus chose his friend. What is required of us to be a friend of God? First, a true friend will obey you. Jesus said, you are my friend when you do whatever I command you. John 15, 14. 